Hi guys, welcome back. My name is C.S. Shantu Mandaria. Once again, welcome you all to the uh, fast track batch of multidisciplinary case studies, C.S. Professional Open Book Group 3. Um, and in this class, we are about to start another chapter. So I think we have already discussed a lot about Companies Act or the corporate law, like various uh, case laws about it. And now is the time to start another chapter that is called as the uh, security law. So we're going to discuss about SEBI, SAT, SCRA and all of that in this chapter. And uh, in this, the first case law that we have in front of us is in uh, regard to a WhatsApp forward uh, message. So as you know that uh, when it comes to forwarding of uh, WhatsApp messages, you may actually get a lot of messages maybe from your relatives or even from us. So uh, doing forward is really not a bad idea, but you should know what you're being forwarding, that's all. And that is why I suppose WhatsApp has restricted, as far as I'm aware, uh, WhatsApp has restricted that you cannot forward in one go. Uh, to more than five groups earlier there was no limit as such but i think uh, <clears throat> now they have uh, uh, you know put a restriction saying that you cannot uh, forward that to uh, uh, many groups at one time i think it's only five groups and thereafter you can do again five groups and keep on doing that so the question that we have in front of us is in regard to uh, appeal that has been filed against the decision of sebi and this appeal has been filed to the appellate tribunal of sebi which is Sad. So this is the appeal that has been filed by Shruti Bora, Neeraj, Kumar Agarwal, Parthar Dalal and Aditya Om Prakash Gagar versus SEBI. Since the ICSM module has been amended a lot of times and I've been teaching this uh, subject of MDCS right from the day one uh, you know, on which ICS has introduced uh, this particular subject. So at previous times, uh, I have seen, I've, I mean, I've discussed this case law when it was just being filed with SEBI and SEBI penalizes all of these people. But now it uh, has been filed as an appeal and uh, the, the whole scenario was in regard to the circulation of the unpublished price sensitive information. So what really happened that it was uh, being brought to the notice of SEBI, the Shruti Vora and obviously others as well. They forwarded our messages on WhatsApp and um, they did disclose the financial results of the company prior to that, uh, prior to the company disclosing the result to the stock exchange. These people, uh, you know, disclosed the result on WhatsApp and sent it to clients and everybody across WhatsApp group. So that was the allegation. That's not the conclusion, but that's the allegation that has been revealed on Shruti Vora and others. So when this went on to uh, SEBI, SEBI said that this is a case of the insider trading because the numbers that these people circulated on WhatsApp and the numbers that were being circulated by the company, like what they have filed to the stock exchange, they were quite similar. They were almost similar. So it was a clear indication that these people may have got um, the internal information about the company and that is why they're being, um, you know, spreading that information so that more and more people can get attached to them and they could, uh, you know, get the advantage out of it. But um, so uh, considering all of that, say we revealed a fine on these people, like a penalty on that. And uh, these people were not really happy because the ultimate story when it comes to SAT, SAT said that the ultimate story is uh, not just that they have forwarded the messages of few companies. They, have forwarded the message of various other companies as well in which the financials were being you know mentioned but when the financials were being uh, displayed by those companies only few financial matched or kind of match with each other rest of them didn't match with each other so i think uh, sat obviously said that uh, sebi really or the adjudication officer really actually failed to appraise the fact that uh, when it comes to uh, matching about the financial about the financials Shruti Bora and others shared a lot of information about various companies but it may be out of coincidence or whatever just few of them match and on that basis they cannot be held as penalized and they cannot be uh, you know held liable that was the first point that SAT said and then SAT further added to this on the basis of evidence that was being presented to SAT uh, that particular day SAT was also of the conclusion that these messages were not originated by these people like they were not the um, originator of these messages they have merely forwarded the messages so that means that they haven't wrote them uh, by themselves like you know some people other than these people have uh, you know written that messages and these people have just generally forwarded the messages 
and as mentioned above in point number one, my point number one, where I said that all the messages that have been forwarded by these people really didn't match only few of them, and it could be also on the basis of co uh, incident. It was also being said that Bloomberg, that's one of the television, they have actually put a tentative results on their website, which is obviously available in the public domain. So considering that result, uh, the the uh, you know the finances were being floated, which coincidentally matched. So having said all of that, uh, SAT uh, quashes the order of SEBI and said there would be no fine and penalty, but obviously instructed these people to be more careful in future. That's all. So you see, I haven't really read just one line from the case, and this is probably one and a half page case or something like that. I haven't read one line in front of you, but I have explained this case law non-stop without even pausing the video at even one point of time. Do you know why and do you know how? Because when I studied anything, like first of all, this is like the third time I'm being teaching this sub subject. But over and above that, it's just like uh, if you understand, if you you know study and you understand it, you do not just read it out, j just do not keep on reading. But if you understand the thing, then I'm sure that you will not be able to forget. I mean, as I said to you at the very start, I was not sure that I'll come to this point. But as I said to you at the very start of this entire video, saying that I've already taught this case, but that was initially with Sebi, not SAT. But then now ICSI module have updated uh, themselves, so obviously SAT provisions have also been included. But still, I could remember that in 2019 or something, something this case was being introduced when it was just filed with SEBI, and obviously in 2021 the appeal has got filed. So if you understood a particular case or anything, you won't forget that in your life. But if you try and mug up the things, then I'm sure you will forget that. And I think the first approach, understanding, if you keep that in your mind, this paper will be the most easiest first and this will be the most scoring paper in, in your entire CS professional career. I can tell you that. I can guarantee you about it. Okay, but uh, I'll take you through, uh, through some of the parts, although I have explained everything that's being really needed, but still I'll take you through some of the parts. So it says, a forwarded uh, as received WhatsApp circulated on the group regarding quarterly financials which as I just said of the company closely matching with the statistics shortly after in-house finalization of the financial results by the company and sometime before the publication disclosure of the same by concerned company would not amount to UPSI which is unpublished price sensitive information. Also uh, I think I'm sure you must have aware that there's a thing called as PIT regulation prohibition or insider trading regulation which has been uh, overhauled or amended off late right now so anyway it was said that this will not be the part of uh, the unpublished by because you see in whatsapp uh, initially there was uh, because you know with, with this classes and coaching side of things my team usually inform me what's really going on so there was a capacity of 257 or something people in whatsapp then they doubled the capacity saying that we'll just have now 500 or something something then they double that 500 uh, something and make it to 1024 or something like that. So it's very very uh, I think uh, difficult to find out from where the messages is being coming and who has got the messages from where. So although it is a responsibility of admin to manage all of that but still in, when it comes to an open platform it really gets difficult to manage. Anyway, I've already told you the story that they have circulated these people, uh, Bora and everybody, circulated uh, various company financials which uh, include Bajaj, Auto, Bata, Buja, Mindtree, Wipro and coincidentally or whatever, the financials of Wipro matched with the one that Wipro filed and the financials that these people circulated. So per instance, it says for instance, WhatsApp messages for Wipro was revenue this, PBIT, profit before interest tax, profit before tax. So these match with the figures that Wipro disclosed to the stock exchange later. So Wipro discloses the figures later, but then before the figures really got uh, into the public domain, these kind of figures which were tentative figures were already circulated. It was being said that somebody really knew about Wipro or its finalization, that is why these kind of figures have been regulated but as we move forward we came to know that uh, these people have just not circulated like Wipro financials they have circulated various other financials as well so and then I told you as well if you remember that these financials of Wipro are already in the public domain like the estimated financials are already on the platform of Bloomberg that's one of the television in the public domain so you cannot uh, really hold 
these people liable and apart from that if you bring considering this thing that you have to consider the thing as a whole shruti vora and others also shared the financials of excess bank but those financials really didn't match at any point of time like forget about matching they were not even like close to each other so considering all of these factors it was being said that uh, they cannot these people cannot be held liable on the basis of a forwarded messages uh, it may be a coincidence so they cannot be held liable because obviously there was no proof at all like a solid proof against them so that's what sad said security update terminal okay moving ahead to talk about another case law that has been decided on the 8th of the uh, july 2020 as it was when covid was uh, at its peak maybe lockdown and everything god knows we cannot uh, i suppose forget all of that it was really really a very tough time for everybody for everybody i suppose people say that they have learned new things and everything of that so that's one one side of things but if we talk about the majority section of the community of the country like india it was really really a very hard time i'm sure you are aware about, about all of that anyway so this has been decided by icici bank versus sebi and uh, the question is in regard to a uh, disclosure which icici bank has to give to the stock exchange i'm sure you're aware that there are certain timelines within which you have to disclose to a stock exchange as to what kind of agreement you have entered i'm sure you're aware that if you are holding a board meeting declaring a dividend about financials like there is a disclosure that you have to provide and it's not that you can to give disclosure at any point of time you like you have to keep updating the stock exchange there is certain time period that this need to be informed like before the meeting this need to be informed within half an hour of the end of the meeting this need to be informed within one day of the meeting so on and so forth so the case that we have in front of us is obviously an appeal case that's why you see that it has been decided by sat so it says uh, that icici bank really signed an agreement like one of the directors of the icici bank really signed an agreement with some other party and icici bank really pro- didn't provide the disclosure about this to the stock exchange when sebi came to know about this they issued the notice and uh, they after revealed the penalty as well so all of this uh, is definitely correct i mean uh, what sebi has done is definitely correct there is no doubt about it that icici bank should have disclosed that but uh, you should also consider the fact that uh, this particular thing this agreement was being signed in the year 2010 right so icici bank or somebody on behalf of the icici icici bank so when i say icici i sometimes really just pronounce it as icsi you know uh, my tongue tongue really flumble at times when i say icici i have to really slowly uh, you know put my uh, speed very slow just because i don't want to say it icsi so i just say it icici because if i just say it very fast the way i generally speak so it will be icsi <laughs> so it's uh, nothing to do with icsi it's just like the bank icici so their uh, executive director signed an agreement with uh, bank of rajasthan and that was done in the year 2010 for which legally uh the icici bank should have given the disclosures to sebi but they didn't okay so when the, all of this happened uh, sat uh, said that uh, definitely that's correct that uh, uh, you know this kind of disclosure should have been given but the first notice that was being sent by sebi was itself in the year 2018 so the agreement was signed on 18th may 2010 and probably 8 years after that Eight years after that, so it's not like that. Uh, I C I C A Bank hasn't disclosed, but they haven't disclosed within two days. They may have taken four days, five days, but they didn't disclose. They didn't hide anything. So just because there was a delay of like four to five days, they were being sent the notice, and that's perfectly fine. But the notice was being sent by Sebi after eight years. So you see, Sebi was delayed by eight years in sending the notice. and the notice was sent for a thing which was being delayed for only 2 or 3 days what is the logic behind it so that is what even sat said that it is no doubt that uh, you know icici bank should have disclosed to you and they didn't do that that's definitely a failure of compliance for for sure there's no doubt about it but if we see the other side of the story which is sebi they issued the notice in uh, to 2018 which is probably a delay of about 
five days. So on the one hand, the bank did a delay for about two to three days, and you actually said that this is this is wrong. And on your end, SEBI has done a delay of about two thousand nine hundred something something a days, probably three thousand days. One year has about three hundred and sixty-five or whatever sixty-six days in case it is a leap year. So it's like about eight years, and there was no response since out of sudden. Uh, you know, uh, SEBI issued the notice of show cause. So it says that the penalty that have been imposed um, on the applicant is uh, definitely not uh, desirable. So it says, uh, if I just read it out for you, that there are latches that by itself in peculiar circumstances of the guilt will not ventilate the proceeding, but definitely the penalty of 10 lakh imposed on the applicant cannot be sustained. So the penalty that was initially revealed of rupees 10 lakh said, said that the penalty will be there. SEBI is wrong on that part, that is definitely correct, but we cannot just say that SEBI is wrong, okay, we will just not take any penalty. Penalty will be there, but obviously the initial penalty of 10 lakh will not be applicable, only some minimum amount would be collected. So this appeal uh, was partly allowed, like the entire amount was not uh, discarded, what SEBI has revealed as a penalty, but entire amount was also not accepted and that is why it says that the appeal was partly allowed. So instead of 10 lakh, which was the standard of the normal fine, less amount of fine will be revealed. That was being said by SEBI. Moving forward, we have another case in front of us, which is India Rating and Research Private Limited versus SEBI. And this has been decided by the Security Appellate Tribunal. So taking uh, this further, we now have another case in front of us uh, that has again been decided in uh, 2020, like 1st of the July 2020. And that's, that is between India Rating and Research Private Limited versus SEBI. And uh, this has been filed as a matter of appeal to SAT. The question that uh, arises here is that uh, can SEBI uh, interfere or probably SEBI can call and examine any proceedings uh, that has been passed by their adjudicating officer and increase the quantum of the fine or penalty. So that is what uh, has been mentioned here. So in simple words, if I could put it this way, that for example, adjudicating officer of the SEBI revealed a fine for a violation of like whatever section, uh, 10 lakh rupees, as an example. So adjudicating officer said that there will be a penalty of rupees 10 lakh. But after a few days, uh, they said, like SEBI said that the adjudicating officer didn't really uh, discuss the case in the best interest because the normally the normal fine for these kind of contravention is a minimum is a minimum of 25 lakh. So obviously 10 lakh is too less for that and it will be against the interest of the security market to reveal this fine. It has to be a minimum of 25 lakh. So first SEBI, their officer, so when I say SEBI, I mean the adjudicating officer on behalf of SEBI said 10 lakh. And now SEBI is being trying to revise the amount and increasing it upward and saying rather than 10 lakh, it has to be 25 lakh. The question is, can SEBI do that? Can SEBI revise the amount of the fine or the penalty that they have revealed? Uh, in the name of uh, interest of the security market or in the name of betterment of the security market, that is the question here. So it says SEBI can call for an examine record of any proceeding if it considers the order passed by the officer anonymous and not in the interest of the security market. After making inquiry, SEBI may enhance the quantum of the penalty imposed if the circumstances of the case so justify. So I think uh, the answer to the question is yes, that SEBI definitely, it's not like, you know, SEBI will not do any of this thing just because it wanted to do that. There has to be some law about it, there has to be some rule about it, then somebody may have decided the case on behalf of SEBI and decide the very less amount of uh, the penalty, then SEBI may interfere. So it's not that SEBI will interfere, the answer is, can SEBI challenge that, can SEBI change that, the answer is yes. but. Um, the company India Rating Research and Private Limited. So what really happened that this obviously is a credit rating uh, agency or a company India Rating and Research and uh, they uh, have given a wrong rating to the company ILN FS which is one of the infrastructure based company in the FCs and all that. There have been few cases about ILFNS we I think discussed in the corporate law in the previous chapter. So anyway in this uh, they did a wrong rating and that is why SEBI revealed the penalty on this company. But then later on, SEBI itself revised the amount of the penalty saying that this is quite less and they wanted to revise, make it upward. So this company was not happy. They were saying that SEBI cannot do that. SEBI has initially given the amount of penalty, so the SEBI has to stick to that and they cannot increase the amount. So they went on to SAT 
and when all of this was uh, being discussed in front of SAD, SAD also said the same thing that as per the provision of section 15 um, IE sub rule 3, it says SEBI has the power to probably call uh, the records for examining and if uh, after examining everything, if SEBI feels that the order that have been passed previously were against the interest of uh, uh, security market, they can definitely increase the quantum of the penalty that have been imposed. That's what has been uh, mentioned here. And uh, considering all of that, SAD also said the same that uh, the company initially, whatever fine was being revealed from the SEBI side at the very first uh, time, which is I suppose 25 lakh, the company has to deposit or pay that 25 lakh amount. And for uh, the next show cause notice, which is increase their penalty from 25 lakh to let's say 40 lakh, for that they can challenge the same, but it, at first they will have to deposit at least 25 lakh, which is the basic or the first amount of penalty that have been revealed. Because anyway, the penalty will not be less than 25 lakh. That's really the basic or the minimum penalty that has been revealed. So once the company uh, deposit that, then they can fight the case about the increased quantum of the penalty but they will have first have to deposit the same point number one the point number second is definitely SEBI has the right to increase the amount of or uh, the quantum of the penalty in case they think that it is against the interest of the security market or the penalty is too less